They were so fat that they're that standing sweat fat. Crisco was coming out of their pores like a fucking Play-Doh fun factory. My sister's off the charts. I replaced her pepper spray with silly string. <laughs> anyway, that night she got raped. I don't know those people. I'm afraid I know that one. Oh, hi, babes. Hi, babe. Let's talk about jokes. When I first started speaking up about rape jokes when I was in high school, a bunch of my friends were like, oh my god, Lacey, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Based on this, I can imagine what she sounded like when she was offended by a joke in high school. The it's a joke line was just a way to make me shut up when I criticized them. I guess the reason they wanted her to shut up is because everybody is annoyed with the PC police. A pile of shit with a bow on it is still a pile of shit. I agree, there are shitty comedians, and there are shitty people. The most basic tenet of comedy is that it's supposed to make us laugh, right? Not necessarily. A good joke can be clever, smart, uncomfortable, weird, biting, goofy, obnoxious, and yes, even offensive. And sometimes comedy doesn't present these things as funny. Comedy can be flat out painful. Morning, Holmes. Ah, Mrs. Hudson. Have you seen Watson? He's just here. Morning, Holmes. Ah, Watson. I can see from the slight traces of mud on your right trouser leg and the fact that you're holding a bunch of geraniums that you're a retired cavalry officer who's just fallen in love with a Mexican. <laughs> Extraordinary, Holmes. Your powers remain undiminished. So, um, how about uh, a bit of a tune on the old... Stradivarius. Thank you. <laughs> Enchanting, Holmes. Why, the Strad, it must be, what, ten years? Dr. Watson, Mr. Holmes? Ah, Mrs. Hudson. No time for tea, Mr. Holmes. There's a problem at the Treasury, and the Prime Minister himself has asked me to consult you. Now, I know it's been quite a while, but as Dr. Watson always says, you've forgotten more about detective work than he and I will ever know. Why have my legs gone warm? Uh, perhaps this is a bad time. Well, well, Holmes, uh, another successful case for me to write up. <laughs> Isn't that right? I know, John. I do know. I can't get the fog to clear. I edited that sketch in order to save some time, but I highly recommend watching the entire thing. It's brilliantly manipulating your emotions, turning your laughter at senile Sherlock Holmes into feeling really bad about his state of mind. There is a nice quote by Mark Twain. The secret source of humor is not joy but sorrow. There is no humor in heaven. And the funniest things are the forbidden. Hitting the funny bone is a skill, and it isn't easy. But you know what is easy? Being an asshole. I don't think being an asshole is easy. You get shat out of. Humor is a type of communication. All humor has an underlying message, and that message, whether or not we consciously process it, is the reason why we're laughing. Yep. Things like rape jokes, fat jokes, police brutality jokes that come at the victim's expense, that's a key, normalize inequalities that already exist in the world. No. They may deal with inequalities that already exist in this world. The problem I have with Lacey's approach is that I get the impression she is talking about grammar. If a joke is structured in a way that doesn't make it absolutely clear that it's not meant to be taken seriously, then you have a problem. And the outrage train that's leaving Twitter on a regular basis shows that the people in favor of censoring jokes usually don't get them. People with less power are seen as acceptable targets for cruelty. This is the punching up argument that I often hear from people like this. They say that comedy is supposed to punch up, not down. And I get that. 
A lot of comedians have traditionally taken on people of authority. The emperor without clothes tends to be funnier than my senile grandpa without clothes. However, this doesn't work as a general law of comedy, because humor isn't class warfare. By that logic, you couldn't make a joke about a redneck sleeping with his cousin, because most of the time rednecks aren't the cultural, let alone financial, allied of the world. And comedians can be playing a role as well. Would you hire a disabled person? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Not dwarves. Uh, I can't. I can't read stuff, and uh, take a lot of time off as well. Christmas and January panto season. But you know, all other disabled. You know, not the little wheelchair ones. They knock stuff over. But all other, not blind. Obviously, no good. You know, dogs no good chewing ear. Is it? They can't grip a Labrador. But uh, the deaf. No reason why a little deaf fella couldn't work here. Although in the afternoons it might be a bit of a problem because he'd look round and he'd see us all laughing and he'd think we was taking the mick. And we end, we're listening to Chris Moyles in the afternoon. Uh, we had a woman here once. Is ugly a disability? Because he's... In... Whether you're recruiting staff or looking for work, Visit the job site where disabled people are judged on capabilities, not disabilities. See potential, not potential problems. When we laugh at someone's suffering, we're participating in a broader cultural phenomenon where we don't take those injustices seriously. I've got a two-year-old daughter, and the first thing she ever laughed at was me banging my head. Laughter is a subconscious reaction, and it's, well, primitive. If we hear a witty remark, we tend to smile and appreciate it quietly, rather than bursting out in laughter. But nothing should be off limits, the comedians cry. I am an American and I have freedom of speech. And as a non-American who doesn't have an inherent right to free speech, I'm telling you, you should appreciate it. I totally agree. Great. See, I say all manner of offensive shit to the mainstream. I'm out here, y'all. But Lacey's opponents usually don't get offended by jokes and then very publicly and successfully play the victim card. They get people fired. Criticism doesn't mean that the subject matter is a problem. It's not necessarily the topic, it's the approach. If the approach isn't funny... Which is entirely subjective. Then critics also have free speech to say what they think. Just like any other form of entertainment, comedy does not have some special sacred immunity to criticism. No, they don't. But people criticizing comedians should very carefully evaluate what their actual problem is. The distrust of wit is the beginning of tyranny. While Daniel Tosh might think that rape is absolutely hilarious, many of us come to comedy to have a good time, not to be reminded that other people see us as less than human. A comedy club is not a therapy session. And who is us? Us as in us rape victims? Us as in us women? This bigger comedy debate isn't about constitutional rights, which are robust. Well, generally robust. It's about what's morally right. And I think the social justice trend of demonizing every provocative idea and the massive support they get from any media outlets is dangerous. Because they do influence quite a number of people who are just going to take them at their word. Just as dangerous as a tyrannical government. Which is not as robust. What we choose to say and do with our platforms, with the stage, with the mic. <laughs> Suck Satan's cock. Put that big scaly pecker down your gullet. Drink that black worm jism. Drink it! With the YouTube channel, with the Twitter account, with the TV show, that speaks volumes about our character. We can punch up at abuses of power, or we can continue to punch at those who are already down. Already dealt with that. However, I don't think that obese people necessarily qualify as powerless, as downtrodden. I mean, try to tread down all of that. But how do you know which direction something's punching? It's pretty simple. Just ask, who finds this funny? Jokes by no means need to be universal, but who's in the group that's laughing? Are abusers, date rapists, the KKK, high school bullies laughing with me? No, they are probably laughing at you. But seriously, maybe they are. 
But maybe they like the Beatles as well. I like the Beatles. Do you like the Beatles? Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. I want to end by saying that it is okay to tell an off-color joke. We're all learning. I've told mess up jokes. You told mess up jokes. We're all idiot humans. I don't think we need to handle this by burning people at the stake. That's so 1500s. When all the broken hearted people living in this world agree, there will be an answer. Let it be. I wish all social justice people shared that view. I think the key is to recognize and apologize. Don't let your ego get in the way. I don't like apologies. They are pathetic most of the time, especially in comedy. I mean, if you are actually sorry for what you said and think you were wrong, okay. But if you feel like you have to apologize just because you upset someone, don't apologize. Offense is taken, not given. There are some amazing comedians in our YouTube community. I thought she had said Canadians. Uh, make me chuckle. And in the world. They're making us laugh. They're giving us a place to run away from all the bullshit. Comedy isn't necessarily escapism. Being easy to digest certainly isn't a sign of top-notch comedy, in my opinion. There is this entire genre called dark comedy, gallows humor, and it certainly is not politically correct. And some of them are even changing the world, which is like really sexy to me. It just got really warm in here. Not everyone needs to reach that pinnacle of perfection and change the world with their comedy, but at the very least, we can be good to each other. I like you too. All right, babe. All right, babe. Let me know what you think down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon with more Sex Plus. Mwah. Mwah. I don't disagree with all she said in this video. I actually think that she does make sense to some degree, in theory. I do have a hard time listening and believing that she and people like her are going to be able to judge a joke fairly. And I sure don't want to rely on their ability to take off their ideological blinds. Pressure to be one of the guys to make harmless jabs at each other meant to establish dominance. Lacey didn't specify what sort of harmless jabs she was talking about. An example would have been helpful here. But I imagine her scenario to sound something like this. Hey Phineas, what's up Ernest? I've become a vegan. What? I think it's the ethically right thing to do, you know? And I think it's the testically right thing to have a barbecue. When you're done being a vegan, come skin that lion with me. This everyday example highlights the way many guys tend to talk to each other. Most girls I associate with make that sort of japes. Many jokes are at the expense of the person you're talking to and exaggerate the virtue of masculinity or whatever. And Lacey doesn't strike me as an impartial judge of what is acceptable in comedy. Social justice outrage culture has too often proven to be unable to tell jokes from reality. Because if one starts with a premise like, no, it's not just a joke, the notion of thought crime isn't too far away. Especially when someone is talking to an echo chamber full of first world feminists. Are you for equality for all sexes or no? I'm for equality, I'm not sexist. I just think all women stink and that they're all sexist and that we should eliminate them all. But I'm not sexist. Are you fucking kidding me? No! Are sexist. All feminists are sexist. All women are sexist. All women are sexist. Oh my god! 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 Oh my